Hey guys, today we're gonna try out Cryptid Crush, which I think is a visual novel where the premise is like, what if you had a crush on the Jersey Devil or the Mothman or something? Uh, I'm not entirely sure because I tend to just kind of jump in without that much context at the time. Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, that's way louder than I thought it was gonna be. Give me a second. <laughs> Need you to chill a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Ready. I'm glad I got a hold of you in time. You're wildly unprepared to enter this world, and I'd rather not see a human be torn apart by the fabric of reality. You can speak, can't you? Uh, I can speak. Wonderful. In any case, I'm going to ask, what's your name? All right, Mero Hyena. I'll keep that in mind. What's that? Who am I? Definitely not the Mothman. Now, how would you like to be addressed? Uh... Voice A? I don't know what the voices are. Good choice. You, you can't give me the preview- Definitely not now. How would you like to be- Good choice. <laughs> you can only hear the name afterwards. Everyone in chat is currently saying, oh, he's hot. At the same time. Spicing it up, are you? Difficulty, uh, default. I see. Going with the intended difficulty. What's with the random questions? Well, those who lack a sense of self tend to disintegrate upon entry into this realm of existence. I'm just here to help jog your memory. Uh, I have a pretty good idea of who I am. I see. What kind of person are you? Pretty active with a strong personality. An absolute bookworm. People person. I have an iron will. An <laughs> empty brain. <laughs> Let's go! Wonderful. It seems you're rather sure of yourself. It seems my time here is up. Good luck, and know this. I'm rooting for you. Buzz, buzz. Your phone startles you awake. A trail of messages scrolling down your screen. Hey, are you awake? It's time. Ghostly time. Oh, is this the Mothman Atlas? I've sent you the address. Just follow the radio tower and you'll find it. All you can manage to, all you can manage to type back is your half-asleep sluggish in your half-asleep sluggish state is. Okay. <laughs> you feel a sudden icy chill, jolting you awake and sending shivers down your spine. <laughs> Stuff's just happening at me today. Okay. You see a large fuzzy gray cat with three eyes and a flaming tail shoving, uh, shoving her translucent paw through your face. Greetings, mortal. With a yelp, you leap out of bed, the shimmering tabby cat phasing right through you. Ah! Uh, can't you just be normal? You slept through three alarms. I was getting desperate. Okay, okay, I'm awake, and uh, I I'm running late. You rush around your room, gathering everything you can possibly need for tonight. And then you run through your mental checklist. Don't forget your flashlight, bolt cutters, granola bars, and an open purple vest. Who would ever wear that named Mer- <laughs> Wait, he's even got a purple beanie. <laughs> this is actually a little bit on- <laughs> You could very easily slightly redesign my character's appearance for this. I should use that for the thumbnail. You squat down and try to tie your shoes and slip on your jacket. Opening the door, you step out into the stuffy hallway and-, and March out to your car. Wait for me! Taro has to race to catch up with you, meowing in protest as she kicks off the top step and floats down the stairs, phasing right through the apartment wall. The art style's really good. I also like the little the bits of animation to just kind of give things life. But I like strong color choices and big, exaggerated shapes. Who's that dude? 
That's not me. We know what I look like now. Taro finally lands on your shoulder as you reach your car and nips your ear. Ow! You try to brush the phantom cat off your shoulder, but your hand sweeps right through her. Caught you! You flick on the headlights before backing up and pulling into onto your, the street. Are you sure Atlas is going to be any help? Taro keeps her little paws tucked under her fluff like a fuzzy bread loaf. You know what they say about Mothmen? Excuse me? That they're bad omens? Bingo! Omen or not, I could use all the help I can get. Right, that nasty curse. You should really get that checked out. Isn't that your job? That's cute. You don't expect me to work on an empty stomach, do you? I'm feeling faint. You need me to stop and get you something? Oh, no. Don't worry about me. I'll... survive. You're the one dealing with that wretched curse, not me. I, I don't feel any different. <laughs> oh, you will. And it's going to be agonizing. You never mentioned that. I didn't want to scare you. Even describing this curse brings about evil. So you can't get rid of it. You can't even talk about it. And it's going to be excruciating. Is there anything else you forgot to tell me? Well, there's a countdown. A countdown? That's right. It's a countdown to your imminent demise. That's not funny. <laughs> I'm not joking, silly. How much time do I have? That's for a cat to know and a physician to find out. But that's why you're here, right? Being a cosmic guardian and all? You're meant to protect me. Absolutely! Your phone charms. Charms? <laughs> Blah. Your phone chimes, buzzing in the cup holder. Oh, don't put it in the cup holder. Where are you? I'm on my way. Sheesh, unlike you, most of us can't fly. You fell back asleep, didn't you? I'm not nocturnal. Not with that attitude. So, did you see the station? Leaning forward, you glance upward towards the distant radio tower, cutting through the night air. I, I think so? Is it just the three of us? Depends. How cool are you with devils? Pretty... cool? Why? I have a friend who just got off work and was wondering if they could tag along. I figured I'd ask you first. Yeah, I definitely feel safer in a larger group. Sweet. His voice is not what I thought it would sound like. Is it? Was that a different voice in the intro for other reasons? See you soon. Don't forget about the phantom frequency. Channel 103.1, Alcorn Radio. I, I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> Thunk. Guess I got no hung up before I could even read what he was saying. The sound of feathers brush against the microphone, and audio fizzles out before Atlas squeaks. Uh, sorry, I hit a lamp post. Oh, we didn't get hung up. Uh, I'll meet up with you soon. Uh, drive safe. The Mothman has feathers? <laughs> What is this lore? Atlas hangs up. You picture Atlas wildly fluttering around a giant light bulb, but then it dawns on you. I forgot my flashlight! Looks like we'll need to make that pit stop and snack run! I'll be eating taro. Uh, <laughs> rolling into view is a dingy looking gas station named Owl's. A Owl's Owl Nighter. <laughs> Owl. Oh god, it's a tongue twister and a pun. An all, it's an all-nighter. Owl's all-nighter. <laughs> Fuck you. Alright, dozens of sun-bleached local ads plastered the foggy store windows, weeds sprouting through cracks in the cement. This place looks safe enough, right? It's well lit, at least. A pleasant jingle echoes in the night air, as the door leading out of a roadside mini-mart swings open. You walk into the starlight, carrying a, con a convenient store sushi roll and a cheap flashlight. That sushi was... suspiciously underpriced. 
You hold the receipt up to the neon open sign, eyeing it closely. Oh well. You shuffle back to your car, bounty in tow, and gaze over the horizon. You haven't had a moment to yourself since that cat practically poofed into existence. Opening the car, the car door, you plop down the bag of groceries with a bit of a huff. Your ear catches a low, restrained sound of claws scraping against leather. The sound of some terrible creature trying to hide her devilry. Taro! You goblin! That's my car! <laughs> Taro splays her paws and stretches, dragging her claws across your car seat. Well, as my Meowder always said, the world is your scratching post. I'll consider sparing your car's interior if you offer me something I want. She tilts her head on to one side and closes her eyes expectantly. You roll your eyes and reach over, gently scratching Taro behind the ears. She's oddly cold for a big fuzzy cat. You're a real handful, Taro. Seriously, what kind of cat drags me out past midnight for some expired sushi? We have places to be. An angel, of course. Or that's what I call myself, anyway. You don't know I'm not a... You do know I'm not just a normal cat, right? Meow, paw over the goods. You peel off, off the plastic wrap and slide it towards the demanding cat. You turn the key in the ignition. The old car rattling to life. We better get going before I totally chicken out. The car drives off, peeling off... Uh, peeling out of the convenience store parking lot and down the dimly lit streets of Long Hope. Taro scarfs down the last bits of sushi, licking specks of rice off her nose. Aren't we on the lookout for that phantom frequency? Ah, right. You slide your hand over the dash and click on the stereo. The radio whirs on, with harsh static as it switches between frequencies until it reaches 103.1. The static is cut with a crisp and peppy tune, cueing the start of some sort of radio show. Good evening, Freaksters! I'm your host, Madhouse Mike, live at Elkhorn County Radio. What's that? Seems my producer's letting me know that I am... I just wanted to give a shout out to all my listeners. It is your support that keeps this show alive. So, as a thank you, I'll be starting tonight's show with some fan mail. Madhouse clears his throat for emphasis. Hey, lovely. You want to make thousands working with a flexible schedule from home? Of course you do. Join our loyal family and become the independent girl boss of your dreams. For a tiny fee of $1,200, you two can enroll in our courses and start feeding today. Join us and flourish, the great mother. Wow. Thanks much for that threatening and oddly fleshy letter. Seriously, this thing is meaty. You turn off the radio. Yuck. Didn't you mail in a fan letter? I, w I wouldn't call myself a fan. Heck, I've never even heard of the guy. You grimace, glancing out the window as the woods begin thinning out into a clearing. <laughs> hmm, that seems a tad insincere. Bothering a fellow you don't even know. The skeletal frame of the radio tower stretches up over the horizon, looming over your destination, Elkhorn Radio Station. Pulling into the radio station's overgrown parking lot, you park between the fading lines. Taro hops up and jumps into her human's arms, insisting on being carried like the oversized baby she is. You open the car door and step outside. You feel the brush of Taro's whiskers against your cheek, somewhat easing your fears. Oh dear. Okay, we'll be fine. It's just a haunted station on a hill. No big deal. You click on the hefty flashlight with a tight grip. You angle the light towards the station. 
as well as the large metal fence in front of it. Crap. Forgot the bolt cutters again. You should really just keep these things in a bag. If this is an ongoing expedition you keep doing, just have a bag for this trip. Put everything back in the bag. Just have a system. Then you don't have to think anymore. My keys always go in the same place on the desk every time. And then I never think about where my keys are. The end. You turn your attention and said to a large sheet of wood spray painted with crude red letters attached to the fence. You read it aloud. Keep out. Trespassers will be murderlated. Ah, cool. <laughs> I heard the place glows red on Friday nights, and the on hair sign never burns out. Bunch of silly rumors if you ask me. Who would believe in ghosts or floating cats or... Uh, where is everyone? It's already 2 a.m. They should have been here by now. Checking the time, you stuff your phone into your pocket and scan your surroundings with your flashlight. <laughs> this calls for an investigation! Or I could just shoot them a text. No! Not like that, you've got to roll! I left my dice at home. Um... What am I looking at? Sometimes things require a skill, and it, uh, it requires skill and a bit of luck. So to determine how your fate unfolds, you have to roll. You'll be given a difficulty rating that you have to meet or surpass. The universe will then add a modifier based on your stats. Brains, in this case, the thing you specifically chose not to have. Ha! Get stat cucked. This feels like some kind of forbidden knowledge. Oh, it is. Now try rolling for real. Uh, uh, Are you even wow, trying? that was awful. Don't worry, though. If you fail a roll, don't fret. You have a chance to change fate by spending karma. You know, let me just call Atlas. What's karma, you ask? <laughs> just blowing right past. Well, whenever you fail a roll, you can spend karma to re-roll. You can re-roll as many times as you have karma. Whether you succeed or fail that roll, you have to be smart about it. You only get a point of karma when you fail and decide not to re-roll. You got it? Oh, that's interesting. So every re-roll you don't take is a re-roll you can do later. So you have to choose which ones you want to keep. And it leads to a direct one-to-one -one relationship between all of the passes and fails that you do and don't re-roll. Kind of like a... I think about how, like, in, in Vampire the Masquerade, if you want to make your character more powerful, you need to take flaws, and the flaws give you, like, this, like... They essentially, essentially give you negatives that give you points to spend for positives, but, you have, but then you have to live with those those modifiers. It's some it's some risk-reward, some po positive and negative, some interesting quirks. I'm sure someone around here gets it. Great! Now tap that button and try re-rolling those dice. Just tap the button right below the dice. Any minute, Meow. Click the die with the pink arrow. Sure. Take your time. Uh, I gotta go mouse over to it instead of proceeding with the dialogue forever. Failure. Result. Eight. Minus two. I had to get a nine? That's a high roll. You shine your flashlight all around the empty lot. Nothing particular catches your eye. Game over. Uninstall game. Start over. You failed the tutorial. Oh. He's got jorts! The Mothman's got a plaid, ripped sleeves vest, and jorts. He's perfect. Also, he makes fart noises when he blinks, apparently. Oh. These are wacky, wacky audio cues. Ah! What the heck? Wait. Atlas? The one and only. Oh, that's I thought I'd like. scope out the perimeter before diving right in. After his dramatic entrance, Atlas shakes out his glossy feathers and flaps his large wings. Why does he have feathers if he's a mothman? His antennae uh, twitch as he stands on one leg, poking terror with one of his hind claws. So, is this the spirit you mentioned? Huh. I kind of expected something, um, more impressive. Arrow fluffs up, her whiskers standing on edge as she hisses. I am a great and powerful cosmic guardian. 
he bites one of the Mothman's talons. Mmm! Yeah. <laughs> Ouch! I am in immense pain. Atlas pulls away, breaking out of Taro's grip. It's not too late to be haunted by something cooler, right? Taro's doing her best. You're just jealous you don't have a familiar following you around. <laughs> Damn. If I had to pick, I'd want a raven familiar. Too bad ravens hate me. Atlas bends down and scoops the flashlight off the ground. Here. here. Sorry for startling you. Breaking through the greenery, a single blue flame casts an eerie light over a large imposing demon striding into the clearing, a heavy pair of bolt cutters resting at their hip. Sorry to keep you waiting. They're huge. And goat-like. They're like eight feet tall. <laughs> ah, seems everyone's arrived. I assume Atlas spoke of me? Uh, how did you get here so fast? Eggs? Ah, this is Jamie, the roughest devil around. They're a great listener, bone collector, fist fighter, and artist. Jamie, you should th show Mero some drawings. No. Oh, man. But you're so good. <laughs> I suppose I'll scout on ahead, since you seem to be in such a in such capable claws. The feline hovers past the demon, floats to the fence, and disappears into the overgrowth. <laughs> we should follow suit. The narrator struts towards the chain link fence, unsheathing the bolt cutters. Did I just say narrator struts? <laughs> they snap through the padlock and give a quick thumbs up. Let the crimes commence. This is a horrible idea. What if someone gets hurt? You hesitate, stopping just before the gate. Psh! Ghosts are practically harmless. I bet this dude's just some disembodied voice or a possessed microphone. Besides, you've gotten me to protect you. Hmm. Nah, it's the other way around. Hurry up! The exterior of the radio station is tagged with fading graffiti and plastered with condemnation warning posters. Jamie turns the handle in the front door and it easily clicks open. Creepy! Looking through the doorway, the dark interior of the station seems impossibly clean compared to the outside. The waiting room is seemingly suspended in time, only faded from months of neglect. Maybe, maybe years. You shuffle in line behind Jamie as you examine the lobby. Stopping a moment, you realize that you're the only one with a flashlight. All of a sudden, you, you can see in the dark? Indeed. My eyes can pierce any darkness. Actually, I actually rely on my... <laughs> I actually rely on my capitate antennae. With these big ol' eyes, my, my vision's super sensitive to light. Okay, it's not seeing, but it's more like smelling. You have got to be joking. Atlas, can you go a day without mentioning your insectoid parts? Uh, I don't mind, really. You twirl the flashlight in your hand, nearly dropping it in the process. Wandering around, Atlas tries the nearest door. After finding it locked, he fades and oh, he fit he shuffles over the I don't know why I just misread absolutely everything. Here we go. He shuffles over to the recording studio window and presses his face against the glass. Jamie kicks one of the trash cans over. Dozens of lime green soda cans come clanging out, scattering across the floor. For an unlocked haunted house, it's surprisingly untouched. I almost feel bad trashing the place. Where do you think we'll find the ghost? You turned into the ghost frequency, right? Atlas gives you a reassuring nod. No feathers off my back. It's it's fine if you didn't. I'll, I'll catch you up. So, the show is basically this radio host, Madhouse Mike, reading ghost stories and urban myths off a script. It's all super cheesy, and I loved it. 
I don't understand why. Anyways, he's the ghost. He's the ghost we're looking for. Madhouse was an expert on the supernatural, so I'm certain he'll know something about your case. Mike is playing a character, Atlas. Who knows what the guy is like off air? Jamie absentmindedly crushes one of the split cans and tosses it back into the trash can. Aren't ghosts usually created from tragedy? He sounds normal enough to me. Atlas gasps. Oh, oh, I got a story about this one. It was totally tragic. Madhouse died while advertising for some sketchy drink company. He thought he could bring in some listeners by drinking the entire sample box. It actually worked for like two seconds. I mean, really, who trusts a company named Toxic Waste Energy? That's terrible. He drank so much that his skin glowed green and he beefed it from all the radiation. The studio had to shut down and no one's and no one alive has been, been on air since. Do you even hear yourself? This is exactly what Madhouse would have wanted. Hosting a radio show for the rest of eternity? That sounds great! You have got to be joking. Turning into a restless ghost is easily the worst case scenario. It's funny. He carried me through those long nights at my old retail job back home. You know, before I got fired after being robbed twice and starting electrical fire. The dude was a legend for us night owls. You truly are a bringer of bad luck. You're a literal devil. So, it's just a rumor. Rumors won't get us anywhere. Let's search the place and gather more information. And risk upsetting the guy when we're about to hop in, uh, and risk upsetting the guy when we're about to hop into his radio show? No way. Upset? Idiotic. Atlas, we're trespassers. What do you think about this, Marrow? Both Jamie and Atlas turn to you, expecting you to settle whatever this is. Uh, Jamie's right. We, we, we might find something useful, like a vault of haunted treasure or a portal to a ghost dimension. Are those useful? <laughs> Atlas, think of all the exclusive merch. You can totally ask for an autograph. You think so? Actually, let's check out the record room. There's gotta be some shiny collector vinyls and tapes in there. The Mothman's eyes sparkle. You know, for research purposes. Jamie brushes past you and opens the door before them, ushering the human to follow. <laughs> Scratch that. I want this specter dealt with now. Hey, I was wondering, why'd you come with us? I wanted to meet you. An average human moving to Long Hope's a major big deal. What makes you say that? Folks around here tend to be a cult, undead or aquatic, which you are not. No? Then something had to have brought you here. He's a monster fucker! Uh, Jamie's expression darkens. Their gaze trailed down before resting upon you. Your throat feels dry as you try to force a response. Well... I've known Atlas since, like, forever. He, he helped me unpack. No. Something worse. Jamie, you're being awfully cryptic. I tend to be. Uh... Okay. Let's not jump to conclusions. You've decided Jamie is definitely annoyed with you. You must salvage this. Wait, what? So... You'll be there for Friday's, Friday's movie night, right? Jamie's eyes light up, the flame atop their head flickering a warmer blue. Airing stuffed sweet potatoes, chicken skewers, and jalapeno dip. You picture Jamie wearing a, a gingham apron and oven mitts, all while carrying a tray of freshly baked snickerdoodles. You cook? Excellent. Part time. <laughs> Why did that get dark? I have so many questions. They called me the Grill Master. Jamie, I need answers. I need you to keep walking. Sure thing, Grill Master. Do not say that. Why? You get you introduced this nickname to me. 
If it's supposed to be a nickname they don't like hearing, you'd think that the Mothman would have introduced it or something. It'd be like, stop it! With a grunt, you manage to shove the door open, knocking down a filing cabinet blocking the doorway within the room. Stepping over the cabinet, you get you gaze around the office. The room is completely trashed. Loose papers are scattered across the carpet. Green sludge is smeared across the walls, and a bookshelf full of records and trophies are smashed to bits. Oh, dear. Oh, man. No! What kind of monster did this? The Mothman scoops up a handful of shattered records, letting shards fall between his feathers. These were original copies! Huh. Look, at, look at the little scary silhouette on the ground. Can you just download the digital album? No, it's about the rich omnidimensional sounds! Ignoring Atlas's muttering, Jamie runs their claws across the wall, tracing out the words written in faintly glowing slime. Dailyghostwatch.net The hell does that mean? Could this be right? Sounds like a website? Atlas looks up from some vinyl wreckage, wiping away his tears. It's just some blog that reports on abnormal occurrences. Makes sense. I was actually a mod there for like a month. But I, but I yicked out. Ew. <laughs> Moderation's important. Yeah. Yeah, you nerds better get snooping. I'll make it quick. Where should I start? Do -do 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 -do. Computer. Sneaking around the office, you stop at the desk resting in the corner. A chunky computer hums with power, and the monitor rests on the desk. A single sticky note slapped to its screen. It reads, Password. Death proof. In messy pen strokes. Cybersecurity! They learned from Deus Ex Human Revolution how to keep track of passwords. You click on the monitor, which blinks on and flashes a group photo of the studio members before sputtering out again. Clicking on the monitor once more, you click the minimized web page and are greeted with a ghost hunting forum. Someone seems to have scoured the page, leaving comments and even arguing with users under the username Radio Ghost One. One comment reads, This guy sounds so cool. I wonder what he was like in life. A response under the same username reads, Great post. Have heaven's really missing out, lol. Scrolling down, you see Radio Ghost 1's been banned for self-advertising. <laughs> you're about to check the other tab open on the computer, but you're cut short as something cold brushes against you. What the f... Did he, did he make a little friend out of the monster energy drinks that killed him? <laughs> That's his Wilson. Turning around sharply, you see a human-sized figure crafted out of empty toxic waste cans sitting in the dusty office chair. Figure has a marker mouth, and hanging open with in a smile. Its head built from a half-crushed water jug and paper clips strung together like hair. A name tag clipped to the forehead reads, "Debbie." <laughs> this is seriously creepy. Investigation. Uh, how do I get to roll? Click. You know what, mouse? <laughs> it's just, it's a little too confusing to figure out how to do it with a D-pad. Success, 11 minus two. What are these clappy things up here? How do I close this menu? Oh, there we go. Boo hoo answers. We turn to the computer to resume checking it out. The other tab left open for a site called Boo hoo answers. Question. How to banish a ghost. Hi, I've got a ghost living in my house and it's going on eight years. I'm, I've tried anything, everything. Psychics, priests, investigators, you name it. He won't leave. Help. Ten answers. Logic? Wait. <laughs> it's probably not going there, but I was thinking like, are we doing like Disco Elysium replies? Like, different emotions respond. Ask him to pay rent, but raise the price each month. Top reply. Nope, not all of them. Paramama. 
Hang in there, sweet pea. If you need a medium, I accept virtual sensor, uh, sessions. I'll share my website if you're in need for extra resources. Good luck. Dude, same. I've had a bloody ghost in my bathroom mirror and she won't stop knocking on the glass. What does she want? Baby. You want to take a red marker and draw two touching circles followed by a long oval connecting the shapes. Preferably on the wall. They act as protection wards which will banish any spirit. Radio Ghost 2. Didn't work. Also, fuck you. Wanna know my secret? Garlic bread. I eat like six sticks a day and haven't seen a single ghost. Do you think it's that easy to exile a vengeful spirit? If it were that easy, I wouldn't be here. You're all frauds. Wasn't his name Radio Ghost 1 earlier? Like he got banned and made a new account called Radio Ghost 2 now? He said the user's been permanently banned. Atlas stands in the door, scrolling through his phone. Apparently, the Daily Ghost wrote an article about Elkhorn Station. Ah, 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 ah. I'm just processing that he's using his phone with his face mandibles. He's just holding it with his face. Ah, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that visual. He just has wings. The Mothman skims over the blog post. Dude. They didn't even bother mentioning Mike by name. Does that matter? Mike's just a faceless green poltergeist to these people, see? Literally no face. Atlas holds out his phone, showing off a blurry green mask wearing a hat and a hoodie. It's difficult to make out. Isn't that how the whole cryptid thing how cryptid gig works? I guess you're right. Jamie shrugs and turns away from Atlas, their tail knocking over the small trash can, spilling the contents over the floor. Whoops. Investigation. Eh. Oops, I'm bad at video games. Alright, nerds, we gotta go. Jamie gestures to the door, their tail flicking impatiently. Fine. There's no way I can salvage this. Atlas begrudgingly leaves the remains of shattered vinyls behind. Atlas brisk briskly marches ahead. You walk like a pigeon. <laughs> Unnecessary. Following Atlas's voice, you and Jamie turn the corner and stop abruptly. He's fiddling with the doorknob. It's totally jammed. Atlas is cut short as a hand shoots out from the door, grabbing at the moth's neck scruff. It stops, confused, and slinks back behind the door. Guess I scared him off? The door suddenly vanishes, leaving Atlas, leaving Atlas tumbling into the studio well, room. Well, well, well. What took you so long? You all three totally left me hanging. There, there, it's a career killer in this line of work. You could have at least rescheduled with my producer. You mean the jug-headed abomination back in the office? Ah! So you met old Debbie! Not much of a talker. <laughs> Madhouse Mike laughs at his own joke. Look at him. Kind of the vibes of what's a, the, 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 the Susie from Deltarune a little bit. Suddenly blinking into view, Mike appears in his full ghoulish glory. You're totally real. Of course I'm real. You think I host a radio show just for kicks? I've been waiting for a special guest slot for ages. Oh my gosh, Madhouse Mike. Atlas takes a sharp breath, absolutely starstruck at the sight of his hero, a real urban legend. Boy, I'm a huge fan! <sighs> Atlas looks up at Jamie, who's blankly staring at Madhouse, a wild look in their eyes. Jamie, don't. We're here to join you on tonight's, on tonight's show. And ask you some questions. Eh. I don't think it'd be a good idea. Madhouse pauses. <laughs> to turn down such big fans! Except you. The one with the ram horns? I don't deal with devils. Bold choice of words for a dead man. You're a fire hazard. 
Uh, sorry, Jamie. I understand. Weak-willed spirits tend to fall faint around me. Atlas does a giddy fist bump to himself and stands up straight. Sweet! I, uh... Yes, this is business. I am a serious business boy. But... <laughs> Never quite ready for what's about to happen. Evening, ghosts and gut and gut. <laughs> ghosts and ghouls. We're back live at Elkhorn Radio, located just off Route 101 for those just tuning in. I'm your ghastly host, Madhouse Mike, and welcome to the Witching Hour. We got special we got a special treat tonight. Guests from the realm of the living. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Mike makes a nod, cueing the two in. Lex, if you're listening, you owe me 20 bucks. Dude, now is not the time. He whispered of Mothman, shooting him a glare. I'm Marrow and the Zatlas. We're both big fans. Whoa. Wow, you got guts moving to a town full of cryptids. Well, you got some kind of, some kind of cryptid crush? Uh, I guess so. Are you scared? A, a little, but I know to be okay with my cosmic guardian around. A what? My ghost named Ter my ghost cat named Taro. She's meant to protect me, but uh, she tends to do her own thing. Where is Taro anyway? Sounds like he got a real affinity for spirits. Some kind of fur affinity. <laughs> A knack for trouble. You elbow Atlas, and the two of you are, uh, exchange cheeky smiles. Then I suppose trouble here is the one. No, uh, then I suppose trouble here is the one and only Mothman, prophet of the Silver Bridge, bringer of disaster. So, what's it like being an omen of destruction? No, no, that'd be my dad. I'm just a Mothman, not THE Mothman. I, I can't really control my visions either. I'm just here helping out a cursed friendo. You can see the future? Hell yeah! Give us a prophecy, Mothman! Atlas looks a bit frazzled, his eyes darting which way. Uh, 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 like on the spot? Uh, I, I wanted to talk about Marrow's curse! It's okay, just go with the flow. What's in the fu- what's in my future? Okay, sure, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I can try. Closing his eyes, the moth folds his wings and tilts his head to one side as if trying to- as if trying to listen in on something. Nope, never mind, can't do this. Why not? <laughs> I- I- I guess ghosts are just too t dang hard to read. Can we move on to the next bit? Yawn! Seriously? Sorry, man. Eh, it was worth a shot. You feel a little over, a little underwhelmed. What about my future? Meryl, you're gonna oversleep and wake up with a headache. <laughs> oh man, you're definitely underwhelmed. Any tips on how to set those these things into motion? How am I supposed to know? Fate is stupid and impossible to figure out. Wow, real inspiring stuff, little dude. Mike waves his hand around, shaking his hand with a head with a smile, but it's labeled as a dialogue line when it's a description. I say we move on to our next segment. How about some episodic callbacks? It should be a total breeze for such big fans. Uh, yep, I'm a real mega fan. Episode 15. Which undead whore did we interview from the show? Uh... You sit there quietly, shuffling your feet and tapping the counter, unsure what to say. My mom? Uh, you wanna jump in there, Mothman? I know you know the answer. Some kind of spooky spaghetti? My mom? Bloody bones! The Mothman throws a wing into the air, exclaiming the answer. Holding your arms across your chest, you sink into their chair. Their chair with a scowl. Perfect! This is a spicy one. In episode 26, who was Bigfoot's secret lover? It's on the tip of my tongue. Bigfoot number two. The goat man. Not bad. Though you really ought to give your friend here a chance. Mike snickers. 
Uh, I'm a little unprepared here. Right. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. In season one's finale, what news broke that night? Uh, I'm pretty sure you died. Alice gently taps you on the foot with a talon and whispers to you before you can answer. There was an alien abduction. It was aliens. Oh yeah? Just how many episodes of my show aired on the radio? Atlas whispers to you to the, in a hushed voice. 32. Uh, uh, 32. Correct. Madhouse's smile falters. Next question. What did I have for breakfast? You look to Atlas for an answer where he doesn't respond. I... I don't know. The ghost is absolutely thrilled by Atlas's answer. <laughs> Any real listener would know I skip breakfast. <coughs> <coughs> oh, this voice is bad for me. <coughs> it's officially too scratchy. <coughs> it started in a better place and then I I pivoted somewhere bad. <laughs> it's fucking me up. <coughs> That's totally unfair. Oh, yeah? Hey, Atlas, who sponsors season two's recap episode? Atlas shrugs. Uh, I skipped the ad breaks. How do you skip ad breaks? Toxic waste energy. It was toxic waste. But good try. We're cutting to commercial. He points at Atlas. You. Me? You'll be helping me out here. Wow, okay. Now, now you all know that personally, I love toxic waste. In fact, I drink so much that my, sk my skin turned green. <laughs> but I can recognize my own biases, so don't just take my word for it. Atlas, pal, why don't you try out my newest flavor, Beyond the Grave? A can of toxic waste suddenly appears in the Mothman's grasp as though he was, has always been holding it. Atlas grips the can in his claws and cracks it open, letting the green foam trail down his feathers. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, sure, but uh, did this lukewarm, lukewarm soda literally kill you? You'll give me an autograph, right? Just drink it. He takes a sip. The Mothman drops like a rock. Oh, he just went from 13 health to negative 6 health. Yeah, I was trying to push through this because I figured that I, I was pretty sure gameplay happens in this game at some point, and it's not just a visual novel. And him having health pop up is a confirmation of that, I think. So what do you think? I'm sure we're all dying to know. Atlas suddenly... Whoa, he's huge! <laughs> suddenly, uh, Atlas perks right back up and wipes away the green liquid trailing from his mouth. Atlas question mark. <laughs> Wowzers, I feel like my skeleton could jump out and dance a jig. Seriously, beyond the grave will knock your socks off. You jump from your seat. Wait, no, I'm just, okay, we're just standing up, I guess, and it's just zoomed in. Wait, what's going on? What did you do with Alice? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Chillax, it's only temporary. So when you can get through this next segment, it's time for my favorite game, Fake or Folklore. Can I just say I really enjoy our time spent together? Anyway, why don't we explain the rules, Flyboy? Atlas jitters unnaturally, his antennae twitching as he speaks. Sure thing, Maddie. The rules are simple. Uh, Mike here will describe a cryptid, and you have to guess what it is. If you get it wrong, you'll suffer a tiny penalty. If you're alive by the end, you win. A, a, a penalty? Guessing you'll kill me if I refuse to play. No way! I'll just be keeping Atlas as collateral, so by all means, leave your precious Mothman behind. I, I, I can use a co-host! Fine. I'll play your stupid game. You plop back down in the cushioned office chair and fold your arms. Now's your chance to really let your knowledge shine! Couldn't have said it better myself, Flyboy. Now let's get this started with some fake or folklore. 
Question 1. Cited in 1971, the Missouri monster Momo is known to scare off attackers with what? Uh... Momo? By throwing heavy logs and rocks at supposed attackers. By throwing rocks and stuff to protect themselves? That's certainly an answer. This is wrong. The correct answer was its bad smell. Ah, uh, too bad. Looks like you'll have to lose some life. Oh, three. You flinch from a sudden jolt of pain aching through your body. Uh, ow. It'll only get hotter from here. In fact, every question you get wrong will slightly increase the vitality we sap from you. Sorry, rules are rules. You're making up the rules. Someone's gotta make them. Question two. Old Ephraim, a cryptid found terrorizing Logan Canyon in 1923, was what creature? Logan Canyon. A lost gray would be an alien, right? Let's say a big bear. Was Ephraim, was Ephraim a big bear? You're just guessing at this point. How daring. And I was gestured to Atlas who's shaking like a rag doll. Correct! Huh. Certainly wasn't expecting that. Good on ya. Oh. Uh, thanks? N next question? Oh, now this is a good one. Question 3. The Rochester Giant, sighted in 1965, crushed the hood of whose car? George Washington? Harold. <laughs> Harold! Harold sounds about right. That's like a normal name. <laughs> he totally fell for it. The Rochester Giant doesn't exist. This is wrong, but Maddie, you totally cheated. So what? Suddenly you're hit with a gut punch this time, kneeling over from an invisible force stabbing into your stomach. Oh, I think it just played the other voice that I didn't pick. Yeah, d dude. This game's supposed to be fun. It's fun for me? I think we have time for one last question, as an encore to the folks at home. Mike leans into his microphone, lowering his voice to a low growl. Do you know what happens to cheaters? Uh... You never made a rule for that. A chill runs down your spine as you hold your ground. So you admit it. I make the rules. It's my show, my rules, my game. That uh, is nothing personal, kid. The ghost suddenly blinks out, only to reappear behind You're Atlas. just another fake fan! In a flash, Mike melds with Atlas, and the two form a much larger, scarier creature. What the f- Don't you know who I am? What is happening? I'm a goddamn and I'm done wasting my eternity. He's in crop top, uh... Damn, I completely blanked on what the robots are called. The robot furries. <laughs> Just bloop. Sense is gone. He's in crop top blah mode, and I forgot what they're called, so fuck that sentence. <laughs> The pair looks down at their hands and wiggles each finger. Do you know what happens to fake fans? The cryptid laughs, taking a wobbly step forward. Oop! <laughs> Atlas staggers forward and swipes his talons into the air, narrowly missing you. You roll off your chair onto the floor. Without realizing it, you sprint for the door in an effort to simply stay alive. Atlas, uh, what about our Friday movie night? Atlas can't hear you! You were gonna watch the extended edition of that one fantasy trilogy with, with, with director's commentary. The Mothman goes rigid and his antennae flip forward. 
And subtitles? You fumble with the doorknob, trying to get it open. Atlas's left leg jerks to one side, almost toppling the Mothman over. Takes another step, but trips over nothing, like two drivers fighting the same steer fighting for the same steering wheel. Are you crazy? We can't just combine you, we can't just combine cryptids. The rate the radio mothman sounds fucking stupid. Jamie, help! The Jersey Devil clambers into the room, confused. They look around, only to watch the possessed Mothman jerk and jitter towards the duo, muttering and clawing at his own feathers. What? Did Atlas get taller? That's the first thing you noticed? This is unforgivable. Aw, oh, I'm not used to be in the armrest, huh, Shorty? This isn't a contest. You're right, feelers don't count. I think now it's time to fight. But that'll hurt him. Oh, so now you care. Gosh, Meryl, I thought you were supposed to protect me. H huh? Let's make this quick. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, that was weird. It said like checkpoint or something, but backwards because of all the other effects. Oh, this music rocks. This game has this game is fantastically styled. <laughs> uh, Mad Lass laughs at your face. Mad Lass opens by chucking an oversized stereo speaker with supernatural force. Psycho Toss. Roll difficulty six. Uh, well, I'm 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 a strong boy, right? So I should be good at combat. I've been losing at everything else. I feel like they should have been dice rolls, whether or not I could answer the questions previously correctly. That would have like been a good chance to be a, have an advantage if you're a brain man, which I am not. Uh, let's do a re-roll, because I'm about to die. I guess I have some karma to spend. Success. Nine to one. Nine minus one. Jamie barely steps out of the way. <laughs> Freebie. Are you two even trying? Madness furiously swipes his claws at the demon, who narrowly dodges the attack. Mero, I need direction. Uh, what, do, what do I even do? Choose a skill in the top left corner. Click it. Uh, up here? Uh, those are all Jamie's stats. Pow mod. Uh, skull crusher. Cool? Cool. Alright. Or no, that's cool. Cool. Something cool might happen, maybe. Sure, let the DPS be the healer as well. Good game design. <laughs> uh, Skullcracker, I guess. What does it do? Roll difficulty five. Let's go. We're in mouse mode now. During gameplay. Failure. Result, three. Not doing well. Yeesh. I, I guess that was a, a failure? Now what? Great. Let me explain the basics. Shit, where do I even start? You, um... Damage. Base damage. Then you, um, stimulate the action and modifiers at stamina exhaustion meter. My, my, my brain hurts. Okay, physical stat... Is my nose bleeding? I, I, can't, I can't do this. If I, if I hurt Atlas, he would cry and he'd never forgive myself. And Atlas, help! <laughs> Not my problem! No, I'm not explaining shit. Shut up and f shut up and fight me, please. Okay. It seems Atlas's innate desire to overshare is more powerful than any supernatural force. What do you need to know? Stats and what they mean. Okay, so there are six stats: brawn, brains, guts, hustle, charm, and occult. Brain is your physical strength. It, it typically, it's typically used as a bonus and modifier for physical attacking moves. Brains is some of your mental strength and general insight. It's the main stat used for, uh, for out-of-combat investigation, plus the defensive stat against supernatural damage. Guts is your physical constitution and fortitude. It's used for things like resisting poison and illness or physical damage. Hustle is your speed and hand-eye coordination. It's used as a modifier to avoid many attacks, as well as determine aim and effectiveness of split-second actions. 
Charm is your charisma and likability. It's most mostly used for convincing people of things like and swaying hearts. Occult is your att attunement to the supernatural. Any magics or, or unnatural abilities outside of the realm of physical prowess use occult. These stats are the modifiers used in rolls, as well as damage calculation for whatever move you're trying to use. There are stat uh there are stats also exclusive to combat en encounters, such as power mod, death, and additional attack power, and special defense and magic defense. Damage is split into two types, supernatural and physical. Guts is for physical, and brains is supernatural. Uh, salmon exhaustion and recovery. All moves have a listed stamina cost rating from 0 to 5. And all party members have stamina rating from 0 to 4. Whenever you use a move, you lose the listed stamina cost, but every party member not involved gains one stamina. Some moves use pretty... Some moves use multiple party members, so keep that in mind. You can uh, use any moves... Uh, you can use any move regardless of how much stamina you have versus cost, but if you go into the negatives, you become exhausted. Exhausted party members cannot act for a set amount of turns until they become unexhausted. I think I get enough of it. It's, it's a turn-based combat system, and I just need to beat the tutorial fight. <laughs> Great! I think that's everything. Hey, Jamie. It's okay. Get his ass. Jamie's totally fired up, and a spark of determination gleaming in their wild eyes. It inspires you, too. Maybe things will work out. Maybe you can do this. Let's save Atlas. Madlis freaks out. I need a breather. Jamie closes their eyes, and the flame between their horns casts a cool light over their allies, mending some of their wounds. Oh, I also healed. It's time to fight. The music is nice, and the the, the visuals being tied to the rhythm is fun. And also, there's just like an obvious. There's a bit of an obvious like. This game would not exist in this form if Undertale never happened. Feel. So I guess I'm also a party member that also has moves. Bash. Okay, now we actually have descriptions. Uh, deals medium damage and slightly lowers their power, so I can weaken them. That'd be good. Failure lowers the target's difficulty. Uh, that sounds bad. Like it makes it easier for them to do things. I can also make. Uh, okay. Oh. Oh, brain stat, which I'm bad at. I'm like, ha being able to raise karma would be good. Uh, this is charm. This is brawn. So it's my brawn versus their hustle, and brawn is my specialty. So this is, I can, I can, I can reduce the enemy's abilities as it's my specialty right now. Being a strong himbo character that don't need no attacks. Swing and a miss. Madhouse's eyes are on Marrow now. Oh, I made their- I wrote- I reduced their difficulty. This is very bad. I made things much worse. <clears throat> guts versus Guts. Guts is a zero. Occult is plus three. Whoa, heavy damage. Alright, Spirit Blaze, let's go. Success! Do a murder. Swiping their hand through the air, Jamie unleashes a raging bolt of blue hellfire. Madness is engulfed in a pale blue light and takes eight damage. Yeah! Jamie winces at the monster's scream and squeezes their eyes shut. I'm sorry! Mad... Lass... <laughs> the, the rapidly changing name is a trip. <laughs> Atlas Madhouse. Madless cackles as he as he chucks an oversized stereo speaker at Jamie. Psychotoss? I have no idea how much health my enemy has. Success! That's bad. Jamie shields their face from the sparks and broken parts, taking no damage. Oh, I was my, right, that's my role, so it's good to succeed. It's time to fight. The so stamina's down. Please actually reduce their shit. Success. Okay, now now he'll be weaker. 
Oh, it's a physical attack too with a thwack. It's not bashing like verbally. That makes sense because they are. It is a brawn move. It's time to fight. Just obliterate their entire uh, attack score. Let's go. Success. Five damage. Now they're at negative two brawn. Oh, it shows their health sometimes. They don't have that much health either. They're preparing an attack. So let's finish them with Jamie's mega ultra delete your face attack. Failure. But what if I didn't failure? You think about that? They're engulfed in... No, what? <laughs> they take one more damage. Jamie winces at the monster's scream. She does not like attacking her friend. Nope. About to get hit hard. Ew. Here, you, you solve it. Stop making Jamie feel bad. Even though we were given permission to just beat the shit out of him. Like, go for it. Get his ass. Big thwack, big kill, negative five health. Don't you, know who I am? you losers really thought you could defeat me? What a joke. You're looking at the next Mothman, baby. Yeah. <coughs> Bye. <coughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I need to stop. <laughs> We're getting a house after this and a Varda lesson in what kind of voices are in my range. You're looking at the next Mothman, baby. Yeah, not a mo not a Mothman, but THE Mothman. No more patronizing stares or shifty glances, just sheer crystalline terror. I am a legend. I am a demon. I'm a... Atlas Paps, Atlas Paps, blah, 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 blah. Paps, Atlas pops back to normal. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little lightheaded. Know your place. Where the fuck have you been? Ah! Oh, you're late. So our neighbor Totoro does have a combat pose and the most health of anyone. The door of the studio buckles, splitting open as monstrous Taro bursts into the room. With a triumphant meow, she knocks Atlas to the ground. Sprawled out on the floor, all battered and dazed, Atlas hacks up a mouthful of toxic waste. Taro, what the hell? Atlas, are you okay? Atlas gives you a weak thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Oops. I accidentally... Yeah, I accidentally highlighted the thing with the joystick. Sorry for scaring you. Helping Atlas to his feet, you keep an arm around him as he, you nervously glance around. Where's Madhouse? Mike, you coward! Grasping at the air, the Jersey Devil exhales a gout of blue flame as they throw punches at nothing. <laughs> you honestly think that'll work? Throwing another punch, Jamie winces as it actually strikes Madhouse's open palm. No. Coward! <laughs> the ghost blinks back into view with a giddy laugh and a what? smile. Jamie yanks their hand away, but it's too late. Madhouse has coiled his fist around their arm. Didn't I tell you? I... Jamie doesn't care. They swing their head back and slam their skull against the ghost's face, leaving Madhouse sputtering. I don't deal with... <laughs> Throwing their other fist, Jamie punches their arm through Madhouse's chest. Let me finish! They're both stuck. Jamie can't move their arms. Jamie bites and kicks, but to no avail. They're tangled in a tangible, intangible mess. <laughs> Way to go and ruin the moment, bonehead. Madhouse tightens his grip around the devil. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> what? I've never possessed a demon before. 
your soul would be incinerated. Yawn. So what? I'll manage. Either way, it's a win-win. What? Madhouse's jaw suddenly unhinges, a curled horn jutting out the side of his head. He claps a hand over his face and stifles a cry, his ghastly form flickering in the iridescent lights. I told you it wouldn't work. Jamie acts fast, taking his taking this moment to finally tear their hand out of Madhouse's chest while he writhes, shaking ectoplasm off their claws. Death approaches, so let's just save real quick. Oh, okay, Madhouse gets an encore. You look at Jamie nervously. Uh, okay, it's a long fight. Uh, let's start with Taro. What do you do? Also, where is the stamina cost? Oh, down here. Tuna Defender. Inter inter intercept all incoming attacks. Maintain stat changes until she does a different move. Let's obliterate their attack. Success! You sound like you eat glass on the reg. Nice try, but I'm not that easy. A single tear rolls down Madhouse's cheek. <laughs> Madhouse's div- oh! Wait, did the bad thing happen too? You look to ne you look to Atlas nervously. Doop doo and band. Bye. Uh, bash. So if you click again, it goes a little faster, which is helpful because there's a lot of waiting for the dice to like be dramatic for a while. The demon gargles, craning his head back before exhaling a cloud of noxious waste. Oop, right, we have to react now. A toxic haze falls over the party, coughing and sputtering as they take damage. Madhouse looks at looks to Marrow and slashes his claws through the air. This is for the fans. I'm trying to go a little faster because it's a <laughs> we've been going for a while. I do not normally go for an hour on these, and we're past that. Let's see, Jamie, what do you got? This is the big attack. Oh wait, they're low on stamina. Whoops. I got mixed around a little bit. Uh, reroll. So now Jamie needs to, re to relax. I haven't done the Atlas yet. Nisus deals heavy damage, lowers target's brains. Atlas takes 30% recoil. Uh-oh. Piercing. And delays the target's attack. Jamie gains one stamina, but both are occult and brawner rate. Uh, that's an all-around bonus. Lore dump is, a f is an attack. It's very funny. Eh? What if we succeeded at things instead of failing at things? You made him sleepy! What does it all mean? Personally, I find comfort in the people I surround myself with. No. Dude, stop! It's too dorky! Get... Sleepy. Madhouse takes a five boredom damage. Madhouse turns is delayed by three turns! That's a lot of delayed! That's good! It's a lot of delaying. Wow, Atlas is just going to annoy him to death. Let's do this. Atlas daydreams about having a raven familiar. Let's do a pounce. Wow. Want to try succeeding at things? There we go. I wanted to believe you loved it here, working in your dream job, but now I know that it was a total lie. Get over yourself. You don't know me. I know you're on the road to eradication. 
A crooked grin peels across the demon's face as he giggles to himself. You saw my future back there, didn't you? Huh? N no, I can't. I, I didn't. You're one shitty liar. If you keep this up, you're going to die. Like, die, die. No one cares. Madhouse looks to Atlas and slashes his claw through the air. This is for the fans. Oh, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good detail. When he when he do the the drool connecting point between the teeth as a, and then just color it as one object. It's a good effect. Success. Ow. They're attacking Taro now. Doesn't seem like it was that much of a delay. Failure. We're about to get obliterated. Ow. Uh, most energy is marrow. Let's do a bash. Get weaker, please. Now they have reduced attack. Uh, kind of just cycling to whoever has the most energy at a given time. This seems to make sense. Deals to damage to everyone in the fight if you mess up. Oh god. Success. Plus three makes it kind of hard. To fail. I mean, not hard to do. Madhouse is about to attack. Taro is ready and raring to tear into this dude. Because they have a lot of, exp of uh, energy. Eat this, Taro. Raking his claws through the air, Mike tears the giant analog mixing board out of the wall and flings it at the party. It crunches against the, w the floor, buttons and wires splintering. Psycho toss. Oh, okay, we're good. We're good. I think it's fine. Taro gracefully slips out of the way. <clears throat> Madhouse lo looks to Marrow, and then we attack. This is for the fans. It is... Oop. Uh, I can take a hit, I think. One damage? Not very impressive. You are so dead. The background thing. Okay. Uh, you're doing good. Let's, start, let's delay his actions again. Nope. What if you did, actually? Atlas begins his rambling, making Madhouse get sleepy. Guys, I'm pretty sure my dad is an intergalactic fugitive. He's never actually talked to me about it, but I've got this hunch. No, dude, stop. It's too dorky. Not that much damage, but it is delay. Yeah, well, it's not a very good bashing. I have endangered myself. Ha ha ha. I'm gonna die. Explode, please. This might be enough. No, last time it was like seven. Ten damage. There we go. You've unlocked some new dice. How would you like to equip? Uh, sure, I guess. Which, uh, all reliable, diehard purist, lemon squeezy, jackalope's fate, and snake eye Sam. What do they look like? Lemon squeezy. Lemon squeezy is an easier die with six karma high rolls, and the ability to get karma back, even on failed rolls. It's easily the best dice in the game for all. Uh, all for the sake of making the game easier if you so choose. You're the real deal, huh? <laughs> Guess that's a wrap, folks. <clears throat> You're the real deal, huh? <laughs> Guess that's a wrap, folks. Oops. I'm, I'm losing track of where I'm highlighting with the map, with the controller. Whoops. The... The ghost form flickers, madhouse crumbling to the floor as a, in an ectoplasmic heap. Let me finish this. Jamie steps forward, eye, a fire roaring in their eyes. No! I still have questions. You take a hold of Jamie's arm, trying to hold them back. That all you really care about? You're all so clueless. 
snapping up. Mike musters up the last bit of strength as he has and latches out and latches onto you. You're coming with me. Well, this is going to be an issue. <laughs> Stirring awake, you blink spots from your vision, feeling oddly light. What is this place? You furl your eyebrows and shield your face from the pale white light. You glance down and see a harsh green outline below. It's Madhouse, with a stunned look on his face and a firm grip on your ankle, holding you in place. Is that supposed to be my ankle? Let go of me! No! You'll disappear! Isn't that the point? You want me gone? You kick and squirm, trying to break out of the specter's gra grasp. Hold on, wait, just, just chillax for a second. <laughs> Reeling you in like a kite on a string, Madhouse finally lets go and quickly looks away. Oh, hello. This is a change. Uh, look, uh, it's no big deal. I just dragged your soul out of your body and set you adrift in the void. You mean I'm dead? Uh, yes. It sounds a lot worse when you put it that way. Where are we? Drifting in a doorway between the spirit and material world. I usually wake up here if I pass out on my desk for too long. Now give me your soul. No. You give me your soul. Nah. Why'd you drag me in here? What do you want from me? I need you as a vessel to escape. Don't you feel bad for me? Come on, you've seen movies, you know how this ends. I can tell you whatever you want. What's this about a pesky curse? Punch him, punch off his hat, end his afterlife with your fist. A very different, answer. punch off his hat. You ball up your fist and awkwardly shift your weight as you glide through the air. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Squeezing your eyes shut, you throw your fist forward and it connects, knocking Mike's hat off his head. Mike grasps with it for his baseball cap and keeps it firmly planted onto his head. <laughs> You're, You're an, an asshole! Ow! My nose! How'd you even touch me? Mike brings a hand to his face, feeling the empty space where a nose would be. You dragged me into this hell dimension! And newsflash, we're both ghosts! You throw your arms over your head, gesturing around the empty vacuum of space. Of course I feel bad for you, Mike. You don't deserve to die, let alone become a monster. But now you're totally acting like one. Mike is stunned, unsure of what to say. So my soul? You might as well do it already. Gladly! But I don't think you will. Brave guess? The Phantom backs off. You're right, I can't do this. Why not? I don't want to hurt you. I shouldn't have to- I shouldn't have put any of you through this, I just... Don't know what else to do. I want to escape, but what if I up and disappear? All I have is this job. I can't remember my old life. I can't even remember my own face. Mike tips his hat down, covering his eyes. Damn it. You're not going to disappear. Tell that to the other defunct nobodies out there. If you really want a fresh start, you could start a podcast. It's like a, a radio show you carry in your pocket. On your cell phone? Mike perks up, a slight twinkle in his dead eyes. This is a solution to all this podcast. You go to take out your phone, only to realize it's back in the material world. Uh, I'll show you later. Even if you're a jerk. If it means anything, I think you're worth more than this crusty old station. Hugs! Mike hesitates a moment before throwing his arms around you, giving you a big hug. Does Y hide inter- Yep. That's how you hide the the text, just like in usual visual novels. Get the rest of the yard. Thanks for not giving up on me. 
You don't have to be the Elkhorn, sta Elkhorn Station Poltergeist. Not anymore. Not if it makes you miserable. Get out of here. He's crying. This is all your fault. How is it my fault? You knew bringing a human here was dangerous. Says the ghost goblin demon. Ah, right. Toto, where the hell were you? Who cares? I was there to protect my human, and that's what matters. You did the bare minimum. <laughs> Bite your tongue. I knew everything would work out. Stop lying to yourself, Atlas. But I really can't see the future. Then prove it, mothball. Um... Shush! Look, Meryl's waking up! Ugh, I feel terrible. Thank goodness you're okay! Tara leaps into your arms, nuzzling against your neck and purrs. That's my human! Most importantly, that loathsome ghost is gone. Jamie lets out a sigh of relief. Yeah, let's get the heck out of here. You don't respond, a lump forming in the back of your throat. Trailing behind the group, you stare down at the ground, listening to the cold gravel crunching underneath your shoes. Slowing to a stop, the group reaches the car, watching as you dig around in your pocket and peel out a set of car keys. The crew takes one last look at the abandoned station. You watch as cracks and vines cr climb up the walls, the radio tower starting to rust over as the gleaming red beacon at the top flickers then blinks out. Something wrong? You look distressed. Jamie places a clawed hand on your shoulder. Oh, yeah, it's it's cool. <laughs> uh, don't worry about me. Do you mind if we catch a ride with you? My hooves are killing me. And can we crash at your place? I'd rather not risk waking my housemate Gus up at this hour. We don't mind. The more the meow rear. Don't, don't just answer for me. Well, I figured you could use the company. I do love sleepovers. Fine, not like I have a choice here. What's wrong? Is it the Gus thing? He's a sweet guy once you get to pass the shedding. No, I just, I don't know how to feel. I didn't get any answers about this stupid curse. I nearly died and now my one source of information is gone. Good information, anyway. I'm a great source of information. Every rumor holds a speck of truth. Like eating spiders in your sleep. Oh, Atlas, that rumor was debunked. I need you to know this. Oh, thank God. For real, though, are you guys okay? I'm great! Tired. I I'll be okay, just... Really sick of the color green. Boy, I hear you. But it was kind of cool being the tall one for a second there. You and Jamie exchange worried glances. Nah, I still prefer you pint sized. Yeah, let's never do that again. Don't worry, little guy, I'm sure you look cool. Hmm. I think that's going to be our end point there. That's the end of scene. We're leaving location. Uh, we might be nearing technically the end of chapter zero or whatever. I don't know how much game exists, but this is supposed to be a preview. My goal is just to get in and do a fight and get a fear for the, feel for the characters. But visual novels do be taken that long, don't they? So if you want to check out this game, link in the description and whatnot. And uh, it's free. It's, it's just free. You can pay them money if you want. That's how itch.io works, but it's also free. So... Do that.